right, it's day 13, and unfortunately a lot of my files got deleted on my phone. You know, uh, data recovery software didn't help, it was a ripoff. So to make a long story short, I bought a new tuber, and I made this out of a Coke bottle. It's a pretty uh, nifty setup here, and I can spray with hydrogen peroxide, and basically all the water will drain down there but send up some moisture. Not too much though. So I uh, can take this out and have a look. All right, so this thing is, um, it's dried out a little bit. I mean, that's the common theme. And there's some activity. The reason I chose this one out of the remaining mostly rotten ones in the supermarket are because uh, is because it, it has these bud-like structures, like here and here. So I was assuming that maybe that could uh, lead to some shoot growth. And after I sprayed a few times, I noticed a little more. But yeah, there's uh, slim pickings in the supermarket. They haven't restocked, and they only have these crappy things that are mostly moldy. So this is where the tuber was broken off. So I got this tuber on day 10, and I applied on day 11 some miracle Grow Fast Root Dry Powder Rooting Hormone. So the main ingredient in this is indole-3-butyric acid, which is uh, similar to auxins. I think it's in the auxin family. But anyway, it's uh, smeared on a wound for mostly branches. That's what this was intended for, or cuttings. So parts of the shoot system, and you know, if you smear it on the wound, it'll generate roots if you bury it. So this is part of the root structure to begin with, but my main worry is that tubers are storage organs and they might lack the potential to, you know, be able to uptake water on their own. And that's why these things keep drying out under the lamplight. So, um, yeah, earlier today on day 13... Actually, no, I think day 12, I sprayed hydrogen peroxide and washed most of the powder off. So I can give you a demo of uh, how I'm using this. So if I take my uh, hydrogen peroxide bottle. Jeez. It's kind of hard to spray down if the bottle's mostly empty. So runoff just accumulates there, and I'll put it back. That actually dries very quickly, probably within the hour. So let's see what else happened. Uh, this has been under exposure. I put it directly under this bulb here, under the clamp lamp reflector. So here's my trusty Lux meter. Turn it on. You know that's already 10,000 Lux. So. I used to have this dish in a place where it would get, you know, 13,000 lux and change in the center. And then I moved it to here, you know, where it's getting easily over 20,000. You know, the low 20s, depending on the position, you know, 21,000 is probably not far with uh, this thing positioned right here. But these are all shriveled up. And the, the reason there's this white powder everywhere is I put a sand and diatomaceous earth mixture. Uh, I saw fungus in that adults, at least one, just kind of probing and looking for a spot to lay eggs. So even if it's laid eggs at this point, they can't get in or out. But these two sections are really shriveled up. They do have some green spots, but it's really hard to see them. See, when I had this thing covered up with plastic wrap, for all those days, uh, eventually it just started growing mold. So I had to abort the plastic wrap, but these uh, tubers, tuber slices can't absorb any water from this uh, wet diatomaceous, I mean this wet sphagnum peat moss below, despite sitting on it. There's no rooting activity. So there are some green spots, although I know in this camera, angle you know in this video it's really hard to see and let's see maybe yeah you can barely see that there's some green there 
But yeah, this whole thing looked very lush red and green just three, four days ago until I took off the plastic wrap. So now I think it's it's pretty much doomed, although since it's green, it must be photosynthesizing, unless it went into diapause, you know, plant hardship, where it just kind of goes into this catatonic state and doesn't do anything because it has no water. So that's my main problem. I can't get these tubers to root. And finally, I'd like to explain the state of this cup setup. So I started having spider mite activity. There was a cavity very similar to this one. You know, all the uh, sphagnum peat moss was loose and there were plenty of air cavities. So yeah, there was a area much like this one where it was all green in one of the protruding spots in the tuber. And I saw two adult spider mites uh, running around in that was why I saw threads of webbing. So spider mites are annoying little bastards that proliferate very quickly. They basically suck the juices out of individual plant cells, kind of like mosquitoes suck blood out of us. And if there's uh, millions of them, all your plants will die. So uh, the top has been exposed, but it was already this dry, you know, a few days ago when I did this. At first, I just wanted to put in some diatomaceous earth, which can uh, scrape, you know, insects or uh, insect-like creatures' exoskeletons and make them bleed out and die. But, you know, it, it couldn't get deep enough. So I had to take this whole thing out by turning the cup upside down outside and remixing all this because it was unsterilized sphagnum peat moss, you know, Things like fungus gnats, spider mites, those were very likely to happen because they're basically all over the world and have eggs in the soil. So this is mixed now. The bug problem should be gone. However, uh, there's not much progress aside from this only visible cavity here, which is green, um, but it's kind of obscured from view. You know, I noticed a little bit of activity. It's turning... A little bit like yellow green over there, you know, almost bud like activity, but we'll see if that goes anywhere. So far, this uh, project has been kind of disappointing, but I will keep getting fresh tubers and trying different setups. This is actually not the first time I've been through this whole rigmarole. Um, in the past, I tried just burying some tubers in a normal pot. And having it in normal conditions, not exposed and visible like this. And then weeks later, nothing would happen. So I'd just dig everything up and find out it all rotted away. And likewise, if you have an entire tuber soaking in uh, water, even if it's full of hydrogen peroxide, uh, a waterlogged tuber eventually dies too. 